We're back with our second HPE video today. We're doing a twofer because we were blessed with two servers. We've already put the DL160 Gen 10 in the rack and inside this box we should have the DL180 Gen 10. Now just like the 160, the 180 is designed for that SMB market service provider, something where you need the reliability and quality of an HPE ProLiant server, but you may not need all the features and capabilities in the larger 360 and 380. And again, larger, not in size, but in terms of, of integrations uh, with different technologies like NVMe or in their capabilities uh, on the CPU and, and RAM side. So I'll use our trusty flathead screwdriver box opener, just like any sane person would, to get at this thing. All right. I already know what this letter is on top, and I'm going to completely disregard that return information. We'll shove that right down where it belongs. And of course, we've got the 2U rail kit this time. And again, with the Pac-Man foam that squeezes this thing into place. Let's see if I can manipulate this without hurting the server or myself. I'm really more interested in myself, honestly, but we'll... Uh, Try to be gentle on the server too. So let's get this guy out. Slide off the rest of the foam. Get it up on the surgical table. And then we'll come in and get a little more snug to see what it's made of. We've dropped the uh, DL180 Gen 10 on the tray here so we can take a closer look. Now is it is immediately obvious that we have the large form factor bays in this one, which is fine. That'll give us a little bit of variety from the small form factor drives in the DL160 Gen 10. Uh, this is configurable in a number of different ways. That's one of the benefits you get from the 2U server is more storage capabilities. So we've got eight large form factor drives. You could do 12 large form factor drives in this. You can also do configurations of the small form factor drives. Of course, they go in the, on their sides and you can get uh, banks of eight in here. There's also a couple uh, options in the back. You can get up to 26 drives in the system of the two and a half inch drives. Uh, of course, we've got the pull handles and coming across, we've got uh, actually a blank here for where a CD tray could go. ILO management uh, access, another USB port, and uh, overall, very similar build to other ProLiant servers. Let's go ahead and swing it around the back. Now, just like the DL160, we're dealing with a single power supply in the back. Same 500 watt guy as the other one. Of course, with a blank for the other power supply, we've got uh, onboard one gig VGA, ILO, USB, and of course our uh, PCI expansion slots. With only one riser, that's where we'll be playing. We'll take a look at that when we open it up inside. And as noted, HPE does have a two drive option that probably sits maybe in here uh, for the uh, the total of 26 small form factor drives. So we'll work with the hard drives we have. I'm sure Kevin will work some magic and squish some flash in here somewhere just so we can see what it can do. But let's go ahead and pop the lid open and see what else is inside. Let's go ahead and take the lid off this guy and see what's inside. I can tell you though already from the blue piece of extra packing tape that that's going to be good for at least 8 to 12 IOPS in the system performance. So you definitely, that's like a value add. It's not even on the spec sheet. You can't even customize it. But if you get one with that blue tape on it, leave it on at least 8 to 12 IOPS, guaranteed. All right. So when we're comparing the 180 to the 160, of course, we're going to get 1U. But that does mean that HPE has a little more room to manage the components. One of the things they've done here is this shroud that will help control airflow. Um, it's also great if you want to put maybe like a hot pocket in here to get warmed up if you're preparing for your lunch break and, uh, and need something. Microwave's busy. Janice is down there again heating up oatmeal. You can put your hot pocket in there and be good to go. 
Now, inside, let's work front to back as usual. We can see our, our SATA back planes here. Of course, if we had all the drives populated, there'd be one more across the top. I did neglect to pull the drives out on the front side. Let's just see what we've got. There's two of them in there. They're two terabyte 7K hard drives. So we will uh, maybe use those, maybe use flash. We will see. But we think about, you know, we're the storage guys, so we're quickest to pick on any sort of storage configurations. And heck, even with the HP microserver, we jammed a 25 gig card in there mostly because we could. Not because any sane person would really do it, uh, but there's plenty of use cases where high capacity storage comes in. This would be great as a file server for a small attorney's office or any sort of professional use case where you need a lot of data available, but you don't necessarily need the highest end performance. You want the availability. So speaking of that, let's work through the rest of the system. Just like the 160, we've got fans that are connected on board. These pop out pretty easily should you need to. Cute fan, but not nearly as cute as the fan in the 160. Still love that little guy. We've got uh, the blue holder there would be for the battery backup. If we had the RAID card, we don't have a physical RAID card in this system. So we'll be using HP software RAID. Of course, dim slots should be eight per CPU. That count looks right. A blank CPU, an actual CPU, uh, which is a Intel bronze, I believe is what we have in here, and a 16 gig DIMM similar to what we have in the other system. Again, as we cruise along the back, we've got the single power supply, the blank for the other. Probably tough to see from the camera, but we do have the ILO chip here. We had it on our other one, it was just covered up by the, uh, the RAID card in the other system. I don't want to underplay the importance, though, of what ILO gives you in these systems. So even though we're looking at an SMB, more value-centric system, HP still makes ILO available. They make InfoSight for servers available. Uh, all of their software tools and the whole portfolio of management is available on all of these systems. So again, we're at a system that starts at a thousand bucks but you still have all the management capabilities you could want from the larger ProLiant systems. And while we talk a lot about these as SMB systems, if you think about distributed enterprise or large organizations that have a lot of branch offices, you may not want to spend thousands of dollars on a server for four or five people out at the edge, where something like this might be perfectly suitable, but still give you all the management aspects that you need. Again, we've got the a uh, single riser here, the second one would clip in here if we had the other CPU with uh, three PCI expansion slots on the back. So we'll put this server back together. We'll see what sort of wizardry Kevin comes up with, with sneaking some more RAM and, and faster storage into this, maybe some more NICs. We'll see what he does. And uh, that review should be up on storagereview.com just like everything else in that couple week window. So we'll crank away on this for you guys, but until then, thanks for checking out the video and uh, we'll be back soon with more.